Well, what's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. I am Brad Valdez and we are here at Fern Creek High School. These guys have a great matchup this weekend. With week one, they are actually going to South Odom to play uh, North Odom because North Odom is actually getting their field redone. Um, and you guys are pumped up, right? Yeah, Always. we're ready to get started. There, there we go. We'll just we'll just jump into this podcast and we'll just go from left to right and we'll get your name and then your your role that you're going to play on the staff. Coach Kenny Talley, defensive coordinator. Coach Kenneth Reddick, strength conditioning coach, offensive line coach. There we go. There we go. We got some big boys in the house today. I asked this question because we all have the past, man. We all got, you know, what I mean, show respect to who who brought us up, man. Do you guys have any any mentors you want to shout out right now? Yeah, I mean, Coach Jamie Brown. Uh, he coached me in grade school, and I coached with him here. And the athletic director here, Troy Johnson, when I was here the first time, that's what really got me started. Okay. I'm going to shout out my entire eighth grade high school class because I was that big kid that didn't want to come out and play. <clears throat> I love playing in the backyard, love getting dirty in the clothes, and mom told me not to wear outside. But uh, one particular year, ninth grade English class, the in, most of the entire varsity team was in my class. And they was like, bro, you got to play, you got to play. Come to find out, I went out there. I'm I'm trying to figure out how to even put knee pads in on the bus. <laughs> I'm clueless. But I think what did it for me was first game, didn't have a clue, and got my first fumble recovery. So that did it for me. There you go. So Just give you that juice, man. Yeah, man. It's like, I can do this, though. Shout out to high school for that. Real mm. talk. There we go. Did you grow up in Kentucky? Yeah, I grew up right down. I'm on, I grew up off Preston Highway, Edgewood, baby. Okay. Look at that guy. I don't have the same story. I actually started life in uh, Euclid, Ohio, up near Cleveland. Um, my father's job was an engineer, moved us all over the place. So this is actually my third time living in Louisville, but I, I played ball in Cincinnati. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, Cincinnati for um, all of grade school and high school, and I uh, went to Thomas More for college. Okay, nice. And, and um, did you guys play, like, Little League uh, when you did, you know, youth ball? Yeah, I played uh, Catholic school ball, CSAA. I played Guardian Angels, Thomas Merton Academy. That's where I first played for Jamie Brown, and we won a championship. I mean, he really – I knew I wanted to be a coach watching that man coach. So There we go. Well, he had it lucky. Um, they had rules in Cincinnati where if you was too big or you was too old, you couldn't play, and I was in the middle. So I had to age, but I was too big for the kids my age, and then I was too, um, too old for the kids my size. <laughs> Really? So, literally, that's why backyard football was everything that I knew. Nice. So, uh, you know, it, it took a little while to get there, but I, I think I caught up once I got started. Nice. And, and did you guys have a, a, a certain number that you wore, and did it have, like, a meaning to you? I mean, I, I wore 72 because of the refrigerator, Perry, and uh, <laughs> 78 because I just – I like that. I mean, it wasn't a real reason. Those are the two numbers I wore most of the time, and – 72 is my favorite number. Now my son that plays here wears 72 by accident. He's not too happy about it, but I, I love it. Hey, that's all right. <laughs> well, I, I grew up as that kid that loved linebackers. So LT, Lawrence Taylor was my inspiration. But, um, of course, when he retired, I had to retire the number. So um, to this day, um, Junior Seau was my first inspiration for double nickel. Okay. And uh, after, you know, after he played, my father kind of got into me a little bit. You know, he told me, you know, don't wear the number because of somebody else. Make it your own. So, you know, that kind of made me play a little harder and, and make people recognize who I was because, you know, we didn't have our names on our jersey, so people had to know me by number. And uh, over time, you know, double nickel just became to be a lifestyle, you know. So, yeah, that 5-5 yep. that, that five, five is, is number one in my heart for sure. There we go. I love that, man. I love that answer. And, and your favorite moment playing football. Oh, it had to be winning the – Winning the Toy Bowl and being a freshman at D-Cells when we beat Trinity. I mean, that was, that was a great feeling. We won 7-0. We won I mean, never seen a game like it. Held Trinity from getting across midfield. I mean, those were the days. That's what's up. Um, I probably – I got two. I think the first one, after three years of losing um, in high school, to go to, to college and have my first winning and undefeated season, um, that did something for me. But um, I think the, the most inspiring was um, – Junior year of high school, I finally figured out how to play this game and exploded. 20 tackles, 13 solos. And when I when I learned what a woo hit was, 
that that did it for me. At that point, <laughs> every game, somebody had to shout out, ooh, ready to get like that's okay, yeah. now ready to go. There we go. I love that, man. I love that. What got you into coaching? I know you hinted a little bit uh, at, at one of your mentors, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. what, what, what bit you, man, and gave you the bug? Just the way, like, he taught us to do things and, like, the, the relationship he built with us when we were young, when I was in grade school. And then I played through high school, whatever, and he actually approached me again. He came here to work with Troy Johnson. They called me and said, hey, you want to coach a little freshman ball? And then ever since that day, I was – about 21 years ago, uh, it's what I've, I've loved to do. I I really love to try to mold, mold these kids and make a difference in their life and, you know, inside the classroom and on the field, whatever it is, nothing like more than seeing them succeed. And I, I'm going to echo that, um, piggyback off that a little bit. Um, when I was in high school, I was blessed with a uh, former NFL player, David Poole, um, from the Buffalo Bills. He actually came down and helped assist coach at my high school, and it was something about, um, as, as Coach Kenny said, there's something about the inspiration that you get from other players, other coaches. It just, they just It just sticks with you, you know. Mm -hmm. And ever since, I always was in a position that if I ever had the chance to give back what I have, I would do it. Um, and, you know, of course, life is life, so you take journeys of your own. And uh, my window was never open as early as, as my fellow coach over here, some of the other coaches. But – um, I had a window open when I came back to Kentucky, and I told myself if that chance ever came, I'd make sure I take full advantage of it, and that's why I'm here. Yeah, I love that answer, man. I love both of your answers, man. It's just because, you know what I mean, you, 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 like you, you look back and you're like, man, I, he had such an uh, impact on my life, and you just, you just wanted to echo that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, I knew early on, I knew seventh grade year that I was going to be a football coach at some level because I just – I love the game. Like, I wasn't the most talented kid, but I learned, like, play hard, do the right things, teach good technique, and be a good mentor, and kids will play for you. There you go. There you go. I love it. And I was, it's interesting you say that because it reminds me of uh, my motto for the longest time as a player. Because, of course, you know, many of us that thought we could, the aspiration was to go play pro, right? And, you know, I had my chances. I did my tryouts and, you know, didn't, uh, made one team in Oklahoma uh, for Arena 2 team, but, the, the the model for me was if I can't play with them, I'll I'll train them, I'll coach them, and you know because there's something about the game, something about being out there, and I think every coach out there that can contest to it, there's nothing like Friday nights, Saturday mornings, getting out on the grass, it, it just brings back everything, you know, and and there's there's nothing that replaces that. So, the the ability to be able to play the game and play it as hard as I could, and now be able to give that same passion back, so many years later to these young men that. You know, inspire to be great at whatever it is, but just be able to give a little piece back. Yep. That make that makes a difference. Yeah, and and you know what I mean, and that's why I wanted to spot like you know the assistant coaches, man. You know what I mean? You guys are on your grind. You know what I mean? You're on the huddle grind. You're you you know you're you're with your men. You know, a lot of the times, you know what I mean, and you're coaching them up. You're being a mentor to them, and they're gonna remember these memories, man, for forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, we hope yeah. So. and, and it's just, it's just a it's just a a, a, a great feeling that. You know what I mean? You're doing something bigger than you. Right, absolutely. And that's and I think that's what it's all um, said and done. I think someone told me a long time ago, and it made so much sense later, that when you plant a tree, don't expect to be around when that tree fully grows. But know that when you planted it, you planted good seed and good soil, and that it hope, you hope for it to grow very strong so that when the future comes around, the fruits of your labor will be standing forever. So, there you go. Amen. I, I, I like that. Yeah, I love that, man. And, and you know, as coaches uh, and as players, you know, you put a lot of stress on yourself. Uh, you know what I mean? You're trying to get to the NFL. You know what I mean? It's stressful. You you know, you as a coach, you just put that stress on you. Right. You know what I mean? How, how, do you guys, how do you guys deal with that? Well, I mean, <laughs> the stress is real. I mean uh, – to be most, continued. Most of the team, most of the time when you leave here, like, you know, I got a family at home. I just got to try to turn it off. And the good thing is I got a supportive wife. She understands. She's been around since I've been coaching before we got married. Like, she understands. Like, I'm getting on the film. And, like, I'm going to do my thing. And we have tough times. Oh, whenever, you know, I'm in a bad mood. She knows. Like, it was bad. today wasn't the day at the field, you know. She don't really need to ask how was practice. I mean, you got to try to take care of yourself. I mean, you got to do something to get away and – try to do family time, but, like, this time of the year is just hard. I mean, coaches are, like, we're grinding seven days a week. I mean, there's no real off days. I mean, right. And, and on top of that, you know, 
we still got our other jobs. For those that are not in the school system like me, you know, you have your other nine to fives or in my case, four tens a week. Then you got a schedule to be here. And there's a lot of stresses, not only on us, but, you know, as coach um, mentioned, we have to be mindful of the stress that we put on our families and the ones that support us also. Yep. Cause you know, I got a little one at home that's wondering where her daddy is every day. So by the time I walk in the house, seven, eight o'clock at night, like I have maybe an hour before I got to go to sleep, wake up and do the same grind again. So um, trying to find that peaceful alternate, you know, like, you know, Coach Talley talked about, you know, family, which is an equal for me. Um, sometimes for me, a good drive. You know, I like a good road trip. So sometimes just get in the car, turn my music on and just roll, just completely separate myself from anything and everything so that when I come back, I come back with a fresh mind. Because, again, this is something that we have to be focusing on 24 7 but at the same time we can't lose ourselves in it exactly i love it i love it man and, and that's just the passion that you guys have for the game you know coaching playing it it's just it's just it's just in your blood you know what i mean yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it takes a special kind of person just know that yes and <laughs> and do you guys you know have any hobbies outside of football I mean, uh, let's uh, see how long you got <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh like i said i do personal training Outside of here, that's what makes my passion for strength coaching, um, strength training for the school so so important. Um, I, like I said, I love to travel. So, you know, anytime I get a chance to take a road trip, maybe go see some games somewhere else. Um, and then sometimes, really, my, as funny as it may sound, one of my f best things to do is just go outside and cut grass. Like, when I got a lawnmower in my hand, like, there's nothing out there but me and a headset. Like, I'm in a zone. This like, man ain't cutting the grass, bro. I, <laughs> it ain't going to be my place I get lost in. I can't <laughs> That's why I got a 15-year-old son. He cut that grass. Uh, yeah, so what's your what's your hobbies, Coach? I mean, I, I really – I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm sports all the time. I mean, like, I'm watching on TV. I'm, like, I, I'm like help out here when the basketball's going on. Like, I like I really – there ain't no a lot of love, a lot of love for time I don't spend sports-related. Right. Major right. on that fantasy football, though. I ain't gonna tell you no. I'm major on that. <laughs> major. Okay, and let's get into into you into your uh, your role and, and how are you guys uh, progressed? You know what I mean. It's it's week one. How how are you, you have all your install in? You have you you know what I mean. You is everything ready to roll? Uh, as good as can be going into week one. I feel like we're there. Um, we made a lot of strides early August when we went to camp. I mean. Two, two a days, three a day, whatever, you know, right. getting our hour long practices, little sessions, spend a lot of time together. We really, de defensively, that was, that really brought us together. I mean, it's like any other high school team in Jefferson County, though. I mean, you have your ups and downs, you got injuries, you got, every kid's got situations. You just got to make sure you got enough guys prepared to be able to take care of it on the field. I think going into week one, we're as ready as we're going to be. Yeah, and I, I, I would echo that. Um, being a first year, here at Fern Creek, I think it's um. My my judgment is that the theme that we've had this year it resonates with me heavy, and uh, I'm sure you've heard it already on the podcast. But sudden change has been pretty much a full live thing for us this year, um, and just the latest with you know even the, <clears throat> the school systems, the buses canceling, the schools out, goes off our rhythm. Um, you know, which makes now even more stressful whether or not we, we get the kids here, get them here on time, you know, whatever that is. You know, we've had to make a lot of adjustments early. So my hope is that with the preparation we've done, um, with the camps that we've had, um, we, I think we had a pretty successful off season, um, for the most part. So now it's just a matter of just really understanding it, it's about us now. Okay. And, and, and what are you coaching O-line, right? Yeah, I'm assisting with the O-line. Okay, okay. And, and, and how, how do you feel about that group? Um, I, I, I feel very good about it. Um, there are some people that I've seen along the lines. Um, Nathan Lang, um, for one example, I've seen since the beginning. Um, I feel like he's gained a lot of um, ground as far as movement, as far as um, understanding what he's supposed to do. Um, some of the seniors that we got coming back um, have been leading as best they possibly can in that situation. Um, obviously, right now, week one, um, we, we were kind of – uh, short change with our scrimmages. Right. Uh, we didn't get the full experience last gotcha. week against Holy Cross. So week one, we're really going to probably see the fullness of just where we are um, with the hope that we have this win at the end of it. But we still – we know we got work to do. Um, but as Coach said, I'm, I'm feeling good about where we are, and now it's just a matter to see 
um, what the end result is going to be. There you go. And and is there any leaders that you see stepping up? Uh, I mean, we 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 we've got some leaders on defense. I mean, Travis Moten, I, I really believe is going to be a big leader for us on the defensive side of the ball. He's a junior, plays defensive end. Uh, I mean, we got Nemo, Nehemiah Lucky. He's a senior linebacker. I mean, he's a smart kid. He's going to make sure we're in the right spots. And we got Ramari Taylor at corner, uh, Landon Edwards at corner. And we got a returning safety. I think that he's pretty good. I mean, he's a returning all district player. He's only a sophomore. He started like the last eight games last year. I think we're going to be pretty good. I mean, we, look, we got a lot of seniors. They have the ability to be good. That's about all I can say. I'm not going to drop a whole lot of names because I know a lot of these kids on first name basis. Um, but I will say this: um, right now, especially coming into this week with the seat, with the all season that we've had, the the challenge is right now that everybody understands that they are the leader of this team. Um, we are fully loaded, like Coach said, with um, seniors and juniors. Um, but right now, we we are really calling for everyone to make a stand <clears throat> this year. Um, we are we are desired. We are determined. Um, to turn this program around and have the successful season that we know we can. And to do that, it's going to take all of us. Um, you know, not just one, but it's going to take all of us. So, you know, from the players that Coach mentioned um, to the ones that go unmentioned, um, we, we desire to see all of us rise up and, and play this game to the level we know we can play. There we go. And this is – oh, go ahead. The one last thing I want to say, I mean, I think the off season with the addition of Coach Reddick, it may have been one of the best weightlifting off seasons we've had in a while. I mean, we actually have a person that knows Wayland. Like, when you get guys in here like myself or some other coaches, we know the basic lifts. Like, I mean, he, he has a plan together every day. Right. I mean, you see that board over there. I mean, yep. it's covered. Everybody's got their own thing. It's probably one of the best off seasons we've had. I mean, that's key, you know, to getting healthy, strong shoulders, things like that to get you through the season. You don't need to get banged up tackling or whatnot. And shout there. out to Kenny Talley for actually calling me because I was on my way out of coaching <laughs> last year. <laughs> hey, you pulled you pulled you oh, back listen, in. I was hey, I was watching Netflix and here I get this call from a number I hadn't seen in three years. I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean three years of never. And next thing I know, hey, what you doing? Nothing. <laughs> you feel like coaching next year? Right now? No. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I'm so glad that I took that call and um, here we are today. Yeah, man. And this is the last question. Mm -hmm. um, what goal do you want to see this team achieve this season? That's a dangerous question. I mean, you're going to try to get me to say something bad. Here, I want them to live up to the potential we have. We can compete for the district championship if our guys put in the effort, do the things they have to do. We're in a tough district. we got the defending state champs, the runners up. I'm well aware of that. We have 20-some seniors that I think are good enough to go out and make a run to win the district. But right now we take it one week at a time. That coach talked for you right there. That's it. One week at a time. And if we do the right things all those other weeks in the building and take care of ourselves, we'll just see where the chips end at the end of the year. I think many coaches would say the same, and many players would, if they'd be honest, the only thing that really is going to stop us from having the success that we want is us. Um, as long as we execute the plays, we need to – we need to execute. As long as we don't, we can eliminate the miscues and the misfires and the communicate. We're all we got and we're all we need. Um, how far we go is really dependent on how far they want to go. Because us as coaches, we can tell them all day. We've been there, done that. You know, you've already heard the story. I've been undefeated. He's he's had titles in his history. But these kids right here, they got to decide they want that. Yep. So if they de they decide or when they decide that that's what they want, we can go as far as we want to go. I don't think there's a team out there that can stop a determined player. There we go. This has been a great podcast. Uh, Saturday, 6 o'clock, yeah. South Odom. They will be playing uh, the North Odom Mustangs. Uh, it's gonna be is it's gonna be a great environment. I, I'm I'm very excited. Both I you know what I mean. I I've been I've been there three times. I've been here three times, and, and I just I just love the atmosphere. I love the vibes that that you you know what I mean. You guys are are given and and best of luck this season. The right, creek is rising. It, Get ready. <laughs> yes. See everybody uh, out there Saturday night. Come there on we out. go. Saturday six o'clock South Odom. Yes, like sir. I always say, everyone has a story. I'm here for them to tell it. Cleats to Whistle podcast.